Hello everybody, it's the Midlands Outdoors. Welcome back to Exploring Worcestershire. Here in Bellbrook, just sitting on a nice bench next to a river, which is flowing all the way down. I've biked it here today. You can just see my Zinc electric bike, the foldable one. But a few issues with it, so I've had to replace it quite a few times. I would say then the brilliant starter box just for the electric, but I am going to look into advancing into an even better one. So I think the, the parts in it are cheaply made. So it is a shame I've had to get the screwdriver back to this one as well. The battery pack was half falling apart. So right apart from that, I really enjoy coming down here actually. It is one place that I do love to visit from time to time. It's a bit of issue down here. We've got a church to check out and where we're heading is to a woodland what I've explored before. Pepper Woods, if you ever seen it on my other videos. But yeah, quickly show you around. Lovely views, you can just see there is like a little bit of a stream flowing all the way down. Coming from that corner there, there's actually an old like castle light -like thing right around the corner at the top, which is really quite interesting. Coming all the way down, nice uh, footbridge going all the way across. Check out that. This has got to be a really beautiful part of the, uh, the Worcestershire area. And then down there, got the bridge what goes under with the road on top. Bellbrook the little village is actually just up to there onto the corner. Then you've got the church, which is right the way down onto the bottom. Let's go and check out the church. The church has got quite a bit of history to it. So I'm looking forward to going to have a look at that. So right, this is Bellbrook village, just right the way across. I'm just by Pinchers Close. Just onto the corner is a few pubs, few little shops right the way down the bottom. But where we want to go is turn that way to go to the church. You see, beautiful scenery for Worcestershire. It is a nice little village if you've never been down to Bellbrook. And there's plenty of uh, public footpaths as well, so you can go and walk those. But by the side of me is a, a book exchange. But it tells you about Bellbrook and history, which is really quite interesting. Let's read you this. From the early 19th century until 1968, when the last uh, scythe works closed, Bellbrook was known throughout the world for the manufacture of scythes and other edge tools initially by the Waldron family from Clent but later succeeded by Isaac Nash who built and housed his workers in the cottages opposite so all the cottages here that's really interesting that is and in 1835 the village is quoted as having three butchers three grocers two tailors one milliner one saddler, eight shoemakers and several carpenters and blacksmiths. Also a numerous pubs, beer houses, even by the late 1940s, more than 20 shops remained. At one time there were 25 mills, of uh, which 10 were in Bellbrook, using power to drive water wheels along the, the Belny Brook. It's making me wonder, is that where we was, where we were sitting right the way down the bottom? Which flows from the Clent Hills. A few were used for milling uh, wheat, uh, it says there, I just lost my thing. But most drove, uh, most drove drop hammers to forge the blades and uh, grinding wheels to sharpen them. Eventually, electricity took them over as water became more unreliable, especially for the mills lower down the brook. So imagine the brook down there, it does get low at times, especially in the summer when it is like a bit drained a little bit. So I can imagine back then it wasn't much of an efficient way to get the electricity through to the but yeah, really quite interesting. There is a, an information thing there with a website. So I will drop that in the description. I might take a photo of that. And if you are interested, then definitely go and check that out. It's really quite cool. And to see the information, it, that is really interesting. So right here we are, the Holy Trinity in Bellbrook and check out this church. I mean for this to have this in the village, how old it really is. I mean, it is amazing architecture. You can just see from the outside the stained glass windows which are just appearing right the way there. And you've also got the bell tower right the way at the top. Nice architecture the church, this one is. Let's go around it and uh, to show the outside. Maybe if we can go in, I really don't know. So it will be an interesting one if we can, just to show the architecture. But I mean, there's so many old stuff on the walls. I mean, this is all faded out slightly. You can see right away there. 
imagine there's some really old dates onto some of these got some stuff up to there but what really interests me is the patterns that i'm on the side of the churches like that and then coming down you've got the doorways with very old pattern doors just imagine the time and architecture and the work they put into build a church really when you think about it because back in those days imagine it took really longer than usual just to construct it so right for security reasons you cannot get in the church what you have to do but to visit it you've got to get a key so from 9am to 12pm let's give this number a call and actually see what happens so luckily with special permission i get to go in the church the woman's actually going to come up and open the door usually you don't get things like this but it's really nice for them to do this for people wait for the lady let's go and check out that but the architecture of this when you come right the way through is just absolutely so beautiful i mean just check above how old that wooden panel is right away at the top. There's even a bird's nest right the way up there. Absolutely awesome. So this is one church in Worcestershire, which is a really nice one inside. So here we are in Belbrookton Church. Check out this. Absolutely beautiful architecture. Just right the way up there, you can just see the wooden beams just right around the top. Check out that. There's even some numbers up there. And you've got all the arches right the way through, just right the way down the middle. Let's go and check out down here. Wow. Check out that. I mean, where did that lead years and years ago? You see the stairs leading right the way to the top, going up there. So did that go to the... Was there another bell tower here many years ago? And that's not actually where that went to. And you're coming all the way down up to here. Check out this. Beautiful stained glass windows right on the corner. It does really remind me of uh, the church in Aglio, where you've got that just hanging right the way down and the stained glass window, sort of similar. 1765, is that actually when this was constructed and put onto the, you see the cobwebs, it's hanging right away at the top. Absolutely beautiful. So right, coming on to this other side of the church, you can just see, similar to St. Leonard's Church, how the roof goes like that right away on top. And then coming through, you've got no stained glass window, just apart from little patterns, which have been detailed in right away at the top. I'll check out the architecture of that going right the way up. Beautiful. Wow. And then the, the rest of the stained glass windows going down. Check out all these. What a stunning sight this is for Belbroughton Church. So right, just before we go, there is a little bit of information, thanks to the two lovely ladies that have provided this for me. You see there, there is a, a map there to tell you about the church. So you've got the chancel, the naves right there in the middle, south porch. It's quite cool, so if you do want to pause the video and take a look at that, then feel free to. And panning all the way down. It says there, um, immediate on your right, you will see the royal arms of George III. So... Wonder where that is. 
there's a really big church, but there's so much information. So if you do want to pause the video for this, then definitely feel free to. Some really interesting information there for you. So we're at that's Bellbrooklyn Church. Let's go make our way now to Pepper Woods, where I want to get to. So yeah, quite interesting. Let me know what you think about this one in the comments. Catch you outside. So right, there we go, that was the church explore. Thank you very much. So if you do manage to see this video, I want to thank you very much for letting me in. It's really appreciative that was. And just to see the architecture right away inside that church, it was just stunning. I mean, from the outside of it, you can just see the church itself, how it's got that style. I mean, it does remind me of a, a mini version of how I in church from the outside of the, the top right the way up to the but if you've never been here, then I've got to say, it's definitely worth to come down. A lovely part of Worcestershire this is. And it's just right on my doorstep, not far to come down from Miles Owen. So yeah, let's go on the journey on, I think. We're going to go all the way now to the Pepper Woods, which is going to be really quite interesting. There we go, that's uh, Bell Broughton Church. So right, just before heading down the road, now I'll get to Pepper Woods. So I'm trying to think where I've got to go, because it's been quite a while since I've actually been this way but just by the side of me I've actually just noticed something really interesting from the history society it says there uh, the church house a fine example of gothic revival domestic architecture and uh, facade conceals evidence of an earlier 18th century dwelling just right away here check out all this the wall that's going right the way down but if we just quickly have a small cycle down you see how far this wall does extend not too sure what's on the corner here, but there, church house and church lodge right around down the bottom. That is old. Let me go back and show you that. But right the way there, check out that. Right the way in the trees. That is really dating back a bit, that is. So you can just see quite a lot of history down Bellbrook. So there we go, quite a lot down here. I'll tell you what, this is what I really do love about Worcestershire, coming right the way in from where I live in the black country area to this because all surrounding is just all farmland and fields trees little valleys going right the way down it's just so spectacular and you can imagine you do get quite a lot of wildlife within places like this scattered all the way around made like birds of prey i can just see pepper woods sticking right away out just into the distance over to that way so yeah Ain't far to go really, so it's going to be quite interesting to go and check this out. It's been a while since I've been. But scanning around, you can just see what I'm checking out right now. The beautiful scenery right away in the distance. If I'm quite listen to this. Just check how relaxing that is, the sounds of wildlife. Just lurking right away the trees and right away in the distance. You see, it is really nice to cycle these roads, actually, they're so quiet. I've come down these country lanes and not even one car has passed me yet. So it's why it's really nice to come out on a weekday to come to places like this. So right, it's brought me to a, a lovely beautiful turn in Hill Farm and Brickyard Cottage. Eggs, so you can actually get eggs from here, pan around to show you. I've actually put an old like vintage sign right away there. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it says eggs, farm fresh eggs. How cool is that? Public Broadway, Bradford Lane. I think that is that where I come from. So I did see it, a public Broadway right away down there. Keep journeying on, I'm not sure. I think there's only a little bit to go now. So here we are, I've made it. Pepper Woods, just right around the corner, just in front. Check out that. The scale of that right the way there. Got the entrance, Pepper Wood. 
and just here we've got the, the Monarch's Way as if that's the Monarch's Way path which goes all the way to Hells Owen from where I live which is really quite cool so right, what a lovely bit of woodland this is Pepper Woods and you see I was talking to a nice chap he's just going up there on his bike really lovely people some nice people around here but there is some not what I've heard been speaking to two locals and the one local is Tommy who only lives at the back here apparently they are knocking down trees but not planting them and he's, he was telling me about like how the deer here used to go in the back of his garden but they put a footpath going right the way through so he doesn't really see the deer no more this time where quite a lot of the wildlife in here is vanishing sort of it's real shame to hear that from locals i mean i've spoke to many locals before by me in woodlands and they've always told me you know it's flourishing with wildlife and it's well maintained and looked after and they've also had uh, other issues as well there's a man who come down told me you're not allowed to cycle within these woodlands and because this is actually a public broadway the law states with public broadways picture on for you now so you can just see that you're allowed to cycle down public broadways i've always gone down some certain public broadways but he said to this man, told him to get out of the woods, you're not welcome in here, bikes are not allowed. That is really quite bad to be fair. I mean, you should be feel welcome to come into a place like this. There's, if no bikes are allowed just on this one path. I mean, this path here, you're allowed to cycle your bike, but I know you can't cycle your bike around the edges of woodland on the paths where you shouldn't be. But you can cycle up and down this one, which is why I've come up and down it today. But what a shame for that things like that to happen. But overall, what I think of this place, it is a really lovely woodland. You can hear a few of the bird life over here. Sure, I did see a deer when I come down, dart right the way through the woods and go right the way to the back. But what a lovely place this is. Panning all the way around. If you do remember Pepper Woods from my other video, then it is spectacular. I really do love it. But I think with places like this, when you're going for a walk, you know, you can imagine it's a, a really long walk going through the, the side of the paths to go all the way to the top because it is a big woods, going all the way down. They could uh, put a bit more improvements onto this place by adding the tea rooms, by the car park, toilet facilities. You know, it provides more access for people who do really need those facilities on places like this. So I can sort of say similar to Uffmore Woods. I know Clent Hills has got a calf by me. Do you see some places have improvements better than others? But wow, I just love coming to this place to see the old ancient woodland because this is really old. Here, just a bit of history, once known as a uh, Piper Road, Pepper Wood is a remnant of North Worcestershire's ancient Feckenham Forest, with records dating back as far as 1200s. During the Industrial Revolution, timber from this uh, and other local woodlands were used to supply charcoal to the iron foundries. There were over 20,000 of them and in 1850s stretching from Wolverhampton to Bromsgrove so a bit of black country history there as well on top of this. Pepperwood is also three miles from the village of Belbroughton from where we come from which in the 19th century was one of the world's largest manufacturer of scythes. Some of the staves almost certainly came from Pepperwood so the reintroduction of coppicing with standards by a community group in the 1980s is a tradition that dates back centuries and the wood is more uh, generating uh, charcoal although these days normally for barbecues which he says there so basically today so a real community wood today pepper wood is enormously important within the local community of Fairfield and Bromsgrove like the majority of ancient woods it has always had a close relationship with humankind and is one of many woods in North Worcestershire to have managed from the Roman times through to the Industrial Revolution. After the Woodland Trust taking ownership in 1901, we handed the guardianship of the wood over to Pepperwood Community uh, Woodland Group, whose law members have taken on the management of the site by reintroducing centuries of old tradition of coppicing with standards. Trees are coppicing in sections around the hectare a year on strict rotation, allowing the wood to be gradually opened up so that trees reach varying heights. So I think that's when I'm cutting back certain trees to allow trees to get more light to grow more up. So I can just see right the way there. But it is really interesting. So I will drop that in the description if you want to read that. But it is uh, kind of upsetting to see locals seeing that 
I'm saying to me that a woodland is sort of like dying back to how they used to know it. But wow, I can just sit here for hours. Listen to that. There is more wildlife this time compared to the very last time I ever come down to Pepper Woods. It's amazing just to hear the, the sounds of the birds. Really beautiful. But I mean, you can just see how you know it's a public broadway with that blue sign. The Monarch's Way, a 610 mile walking trail from the escape of Charles II after the Battle of Worcester in 1651. Bit of history there. So there we go, if you want to pause that and read it, then definitely feel free to. So right here we are in Fairfield now. Just got the church on to the left. Just right away onto here, as you can just see. Lovely, beautiful looking church just right on the corner. Two bells sticking right away on top. Check out that. There used to be something about halfway. Let's pan around to show you. Right the way there, there used to be something just onto the corner there. I'll check out the scale of that church. Then coming all the way down, you just see Fairfield itself. You've got the shops to the corner there. So this one's called St Mark's Church in Fairfield. You can just see St Mark's. You can just see the angle of it right the way there, just onto the corner. Check how big that is compared to the other church, what I've been to. The village is just absolutely lovely. So right, that's about it for exploring Worcestershire. We've actually covered uh, a little fair amount actually, going through Pepper Woods, down to Fairfield, just to show you the outside of the church. And then all the way down there, spoke to some lovely people. There is some really nice places you can visit in Worcestershire, so we'll go and check out some more within the next couple of uh, episodes or so. But yeah, from the Midlands Outdoors, see you soon. Wind is really picking up, so glad I've ended the video here. It's getting really windier. But still no signal, so I can't show you that, which is a real shame. But yeah, from me, see you soon.